This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. And you always have a different bullshit answer. I'm a writer. Bullshit is my business. 3. Newport Beach luxuriated in spring warmth when David Thorne arrived late on the afternoon of March 26th. In an otherwise clear sky, a long filigree of white clouds ornamented the west, soon to be gilded by the declining sun. A taxi brought him from John Wayne Airport to his home in that neighborhood of Newport known as Corona del Mar. His cottage-style single-story residence stood three blocks from the beach and lacked an ocean view, but the lot was of great value. He would not have sold the place for ten times what it was worth. He had purchased the property with earnings from his first bestseller, when he'd been a twenty-five-year-old wonderkind. He still liked its cottage charm, pale yellow stucco, windows flanked by white shutters with scalloped slats, a porch with a canary-yellow swing. The house was shaded by palm trees and skirted with hibiscus, soon to be laden with huge yellow flowers. A property management firm maintained the place in immaculate condition and also looked after his SUV, a white Porsche Cayenne. They would have rented the house when David was in New York, but he didn't allow it to be occupied by others. In spite of its humble style and dimensions, it was something of a shrine. The urge to return had overcome him in January, but that would have been only seven months since his previous visit, which felt wrong. Self-restraint was required. Always, after he flew back to New York, on landing at the airport, he was seized by a desire to return at once to Newport. He had not yet visited twice in the same year, but he kept the cottage vacant in case one day he could not resist the pull this property exerted on him. Sometimes he thought he should never have left. Maybe he would be happiest if he lived here full time. But intuition argued that to make this his only home would put at risk not just what qualified contentment he had found in the past ten years, but also his sanity. He understood that, in his case, creative talent was twined with a tendency to obsession. He needed to stay in touch with this place, this important period of his past. But if he didn't resist its attraction, he would be consumed by it. The time he spent here began in denial and hope. But week by week the denial gave way to guilt and the hope melted into sorrow. After he had unpacked, he stood for a while staring at the queen-size bed. Then he removed the spread and folded it and put it aside on a bench. His hands trembled when he turned back the sheets. Later, at a restaurant on the harbor, where the decor was black and silver with blue accents, full-on art deco, he had a drink at the bar and then dinner at a window table. Sailing yachts and motor cruisers plied the waters, returning from an afternoon at sea. He would dine here most nights. He always did. The food was excellent. If he drank too much, there was strong coffee or a taxi. He didn't recognize any of the staff from earlier visits. If any remembered him, they didn't say so. That was as he wanted. He preferred anonymity and had no desire to engage in conversation. At the bar, and again as he repaired to a table, an expectation overcame him. Of what, whether of good or bad, he couldn't say. Alert, he sat alone at a window table for two, surveying the other patrons, but they were as ordinary as they were well-to-do. The fleecy clouds alchemized to gold against an azure sky, and then curdled blood-red against a sapphire backdrop. But it wasn't the sunset that filled him with anticipation. Gradually, his presentiment faded as the stars came out. On the dark water of the harbor, reflections of shoreside lights cockled like colorful skeins of rippled ribbon sugar candy. He and Emily had come here back in the day, when the decor had been somewhat less glamorous. But she didn't haunt this place. Only his heart. During the ten-minute drive home, he felt that the night was as incomplete as the half-moon. He dreamed of the many-chambered cellar, that labyrinth of wickedness and cruelty. Although it was a real-world place, he had avoided watching news film of it. But his imagination took him there again in his restless sleep. So vivid were these nightmare images that when he woke at 3.15, 
he went into the bathroom and threw up. 4. 